Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Just uh, everyone I've interviewed today, just apologies. I don't like leaving the interview to the Friday. Uh, this is after the way, and obviously there was a bit of commotion here. Uh, yesterday, drama. A bit of drama. Um, so uh, weren't able to do any interview yesterday. Um, but you've got Willie Hutchinson on tomorrow night, and of course Liam Williams defending mm. his British title with the hopes of a, a world title shot next. Um, let's talk about Liam first. Andrew Robinson, what do you know about him, Dom? Yeah, he's tough. You know, he's boxed a few people. He's uh, he, he he boxed Mark Efron, gave a good account of himself, but got stopped. Then got too involved. But you know, he's a tough kid, and uh, you know, Liam is the British champion. Um, and Andrew, as you would have seen the other day when he was talking in the press conference, you know, it's it's an honour for him to share the ring. And you know, some people who are. Well, I'm going to say not full-time professionals. You know, he's not. He's, he's boxed, but I don't think it's his main job. It is. It is that kind of thing to be to be in a fight with somebody uh, who's everybody knows about, who's on his way to a world title shot. Um, there's always that outside chance that they can think they can cause an upset. He's got nothing to lose, and when you're a fighter, when you've got nothing to lose, sometimes that's the best place to be. And you'll have seen, you know, a good look at Liam. You'll have seen uh, the fighters he's been in with. He's obviously been shared the ring with Efron as well, who's boxed Liam. So, you know, he's, he seems game enough. And uh, for him, you know, just to get through rounds or, or finish on his feet will be an achievement. But, you know, he's 35. He's game. He'll have a fight. He's, he's, he was buzzing the other day. And, you know, we'll see when he gets in the ring on Saturday night, see if he's still got that buzz about him. Happy with uh, Liam on the scales today? Yeah, bang on the limit, you know, 11-6. And, you know, he's fair play to Liam. He's been in camp a long time and he's 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 keeping in camps for a long time. He's, he's training on a regular basis because he's got this world title fight looming. And I've said to him, you know, the best, uh, give yourself the advantage of being, you know, close to the weight, in shape and on it. Because going to America to face him, you're going to be up against it, you know, with the judges, the travel and everything else. Be the best version going out there. So... You know, he's he's made the weight easy. He could even probably make get down to one five four. He's making weight that easy these days. He almost woke up on the weight this morning. Um, so yeah, he's in a good place. Even though he, he can make one five four, he he looks much better at one sixty. And also the bigger fights are at one sixty, and he's he's mandatory for a world title shot there. So he's going to stay at sixty. Oh yeah, he's going to stay at one sixty. I mean, you know, we used to talk about when he used to make uh, one five four and. You know, he was younger than he's, he's, he's 20, I think he's 29 now, and it, it's always going to suit the older man to be weighing a bit, a little bit heavy, and he is looking good at that weight, um, you know, but he said to me today, because I could have probably kept at 154, because, well, this is where you need to be, you know, you are strong at 160, so that's where we are, but yeah, he's just, you know, confident he can make the weight dead easy, and he's, uh, you know, he, he performs when he, when he gets in the ring. Everything goes well, uh, hopefully tomorrow night, do you think Demetrius Andre will take that fight, or do you think he'll vacate? I don't know. I mean, you probably follow the the storyline better. You deal with Eddie. I spoke to Eddie. He said maybe February time, but I think I've said in previous interviews they've probably got some other options down the line. It's not, you know, the best fight for them. I don't think. I think there's other there's more exciting options or easier options to them or more lucrative options than Liam Williams. It, it is a lot of risk for very little reward. So you know, we'll just get through this fight. And I've said to Liam, look, whatever happens, just keep fighting. Who's put in front of you? Just get your money. Just keep fighting. Keep training, and the and the fights will follow. And when you when that world title fight does come, you'll be ready. Don't be just sitting around waiting, crossing your fingers, getting frustrated. Just do your job. Be a professional. Of course, uh, there is a potential uh, chance that Hamie Mungia fight happening as well, which is a brilliant clash of styles. Mm. Um, so that's another potential big fight for Liam. And the, the Charlo fight, Liam's called for that. Whether, again, that happens, we don't know. But at least Liam's putting his name with these you know, top-level fighters, big-name fighters as well. I think you know, at the age where he's at now, he's got to, next uh, two or three years, he's got to be fighting them kind of kids. He's, you know, the biggest name so far is, for, is, is Liam Smith. So, you know, he wants to move out of that circle. He wants to get himself in the mix and, and, and be in a lucrative fight. So, yeah, Mungia would be a good fight. You look at his performance against Dennis Hogan, which weren't fantastic. Anybody who's you know knows about boxing or got something about him will cause him problems. You know, don't, don't get wrapped up in the hype. He's a good kid, but he's not Canelo, is he? Uh, and he, he has been exposed at certain points. He probably doesn't make the weight well. 
Um, so, you know, if anybody's going to beat that guy, it's going to be Liam Williams. Willie Hutchinson's uh, opponent just boxed Sergio Martinez, didn't he? Mm. So, uh, what are you expecting from uh, Willie on Saturday night? And what do you think about his opponent? Is it a step up? Yeah, look, he's, he, it's hard to say because it's difficult getting opponents, isn't it, these days? It's not It's not easy. And he, he boxed Martinez, who's, who's a good, good fighter in his time. I mean, he's knocking on Nace 45 and Martinez stopped this guy with a body shot, but it was competitive until then. Um, so, Willie's moving down the weights. He's 12-2. He's this was going to be a title fight. At 12 stone, pretty different opponent. They couldn't make it. So, you know, that's the same thing. It was only one round last time. This kid's tougher, more experienced, been in with better guys. So, we'll see, you know, if Willie can get rid of him quick. You know, I'm thinking within four rounds. Uh, that'd be a, a, a good little um, indication of where Willie is. I think Martinez went a bit, went a, maybe six or seven with this guy before he stopped him. Um, so you know he's cagey, he was cagey Mar Martinez. He knows the shots. He's a cagey, cagey old fox, and he knows how to you know how to throw the shots at the right time. Uh, look at that fight against Paul Williams. You know what I mean? Paul Williams was destroying everybody to the camp against Martinez. Um, so you know it'd be a good indication that he's been in with a guy who's been in with a quality, quality operator. If uh, it'll be over the hill. In my opinion, with Mar uh, Sergio Martinez, so you know it's another another fight. To see where Liam Williams, uh, sorry, where Williamson is. Been a good year for him. though, very active. Yeah, he has been. Has he been active? I mean, he's he's. This is his second fight this year. And he, yeah, I think, but in a short space of time. Hasn't yeah, been? short. Yeah, short, I mean, he, I think the last time he boxed was it. I can't even remember. But <laughs> there's that many fights. But you know, it, it is it is good, and I think he's going to fight again in December. Uh, so he will have been very good, you know, very very active in the last couple of months of this year, considering the lockdown. So he's on his way. Look, he's 22. Um, he he'd been over at like boxing at 12, 10, 12, 7. Uh, they weren't fantastic performance, but we always had this in his mind to get down to 12 stone. I think that's where he's going to be more effective. Uh, he's more mature now. He's, he, he he did some great round sparring, 20 rounds of sparring with Joshua Boatze last couple of weeks. You know, Shakan Peters, Lerone Richards, he's, he's had quality sparring and it's never a punch up. They're all learning spars, you know, uh, seeing what people have got, seeing what kind of moves you can practice. And, you know, they're coming uh, to, to have a good tear up and, you know, he's been very good. So it's, he's realising how everything's falling into place. So it'd be interesting what fights are going to be made over the next couple of months because he's up for any, any, any kind of fight. Moving on uh, away from this fight week, we know Warrington Kanzu looks like it's been finalised. What is the situation currently with Kid Galad? Well, I mean, I don't know. It's you know, you like again, you you've got you know very close. To I haven't it. heard anything Have on, not, on well, Kid yet. The, the, we've had the we've had the uh, the ruling from the IBF, and uh, he's got to go on by a, at the end of November, and uh, if Warrington wins, he's got to face Galahad by February. Now. It does say in the letter that um, it's only the IBF title on the line. So there's no unification as far as I'm concerned unless they've changed their mind again, but they've done the ruling. We're happy with it. Well, we're not happy with the ruling because we wanted Galahad to fight Warrington next, but we have to accept what the IBF have done. So we've got all the stipulations of it, and, and so has Eddie. So let's just see what they come out with. And, you know, if it's not, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't follow the letter to the letter, what we've got the affair, but then we're gonna, we're gonna object. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna throw objections in because Galad's waited long enough for his, his chance. Uh, they've gone for an exception, so we'll see what comes out, what they're saying it's for, uh, and then if it's not how we like it, then we're gonna kick off. Exceptional last time, Kid Galad, when he was in the ring. Um, if you're saying it's that February kind of time zone we're waiting, would you like him ideally to box once before that, or are you just going to sit tight? No, obviously, look, he boxed Warrington uh, a year ago in July. Yeah. And then he waited till February, which is almost eight months. Warrington, after boxing Gala, had a gimme with, what, what the two shades of the color? Takush. Takush. You know, that wasn't even a sparring session. It wasn't even worth a fight. That was his last fight. So you measure up. Gala went in against a good quality operator with Marrera, Marrero. And Josh Warrington knocked over somebody in two rounds who wasn't worth, worth a toss, really, to put it bluntly. So we can wait, you know, I mean, we can wait um, for that fight because, you know, Gall Galahad would rather fight quality operators than just, I mean, give, what's the point? You know, he had, he had a, he had a filler, filler of a fight in Sheffield Arena uh, a year or so ago. He did an eight-rounder, Barry, and, you know, made hard work of it, really, for it was. 
and that's why you don't really want to be taking those fights because you tend to go down to the opposition's level uh, and nothing switches a fighter on more than being in a good fight. Uh, you know, look at Dillian White against Povetkin, he's it's in that balance again, why take a risk? Luckily there's another fight to come out of it which will be interesting to see how it goes. So, but for Gallard, he, time's on his side, he can wait, he lives well in between fights, so he's not really having to do anything different, whereas look at Warrington, he blows himself up, he goes out of shape, and then he has to train back down to, you know, to his fighting weight. I've heard about Gallard, probably the hardest working fight in the country. He's got to be, because he, he's not going to, you know, the opportunities have been f uh, few and far between, so he's got to keep on it and, and be ready. And as a professional, fight, you know, really all fighters should be like that. Dom, uh, have you spoken to Kelbrook recently? Uh, no, like for a long time since the sports car, I message him every now and again over certain stuff. But you know, the 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 parting words were, you know, he wanted to go to Fort Ventura to train. At the end of the day, I'm the trainer. If I train somebody, it's, I don't have anybody telling me how they want their camp running. Some fighters might do that, you know, um, but it's never been that way with me. I stipulate what the camp is and what we're going to do. If they're not happy with that, then they can go and do it somewhere else. I don't have people telling me how to train because I'm a trainer. So I know what I'm doing. So I won't have anybody coming in and dictating to me. Not that the Kel did, that Kel did, but he wanted to go to Fort Aventura to train. I've obviously got Willie Hutchinson and Liam Williams fighting. And you never know there's going to be a lockdown. I can't get caught in quarantine or be locked down or stuck mm. in another country. I can't. I've got a gym to run. I've got fights to fight. Realistically, Kel Brook didn't need to be anywhere apart from Sheffield. Why would you take the risk? You know, in these times, why would you take the risk to go abroad? He's in a good fight. It's a big fight with... Uh, with, with Crawford, Terence Crawford, and you know whether it's a an exercise in saving saving money or whatever it is, he's not doing it with Eddie. He's doing it all off his own bike. Well, fair enough. That's he's, he's that's his you know that's down to him. But I don't train. You know, I have people saying to me, "Well, you're going to come on board for the last three weeks or the six weeks." No, I'm I'm not going to do that. He wouldn't ask me to do that. But I train people for camps twelve weeks. I need to know from the beginning of the camp to the end what they're capable of. Not going in half blind after six weeks and you know I can't make, wave a magic wand for people and you know make them win a fight it's what you do in the camp and weeks before so people make these decisions you know sometimes you know people make good decisions bad decisions generally fighters I'm not just talking about Kelbrook I'm talking a lot of fighters make bad decisions that's why they have managers they're there to fight you know one of the smartest fighters out there Floyd Mayweather yeah he weighs it all up but so many fighters make mistakes at the wrong time and I personally think Kel Brook could beat Crawford, you know, Terence Crawford, I think he could, but he'd have to have the best camp of his life, he'd have to make the, make the weight the best he could, he'd have to have the team behind him, you know, he he's almost seems to be doing it on himself, which is not really a good place to be going into America. You know, you need somebody around you with experience and, uh, you know, not you're doing it. Doesn't, no, it doesn't matter how much the fighter knows. The fighter doesn't want to be concentrating on anything apart from fighting. You know, leave everything else. So I don't even know who's training him. But, you know, we, we, we haven't fell out. We're never, we're never going to fall out. Mm -hmm. You know, he does his own thing. He's, he, like I keep saying, he's 34 now. He's got three kids. He's made his money. The choices he makes, there is. I was going to ask, are the terms good? I think you've answered that yeah, just now. It's never, we're never going to fall, listen, it's never, never an issue. You know, I've had him since he was 10 years old. What we're going to fall out about is give me plenty of money. We've had a good run. People, you know, they can't, whatever my opinion is or whatever Eddie's, you know, Eddie's promoting him all this time. He's not doing this fight with Eddie. You know, that's so he's, he's not doing a fight with his old promoter. He's not doing his, a fight with his trainer. Well, that's fair enough. You know, we've, we accept that's not an issue. You know, that he can go and do that. But, Eddie will still go promoting other fighters and I'll still be training other fighters. We've all got jobs to do. And you make your choices on what's good for you. You've got to, when you've got a lot of fighters, like I've got a lot of fighters, I can balance it out. But I just can't take the risk of, you know, in this in this day and age, what's going on with COVID. And an example of this week, somebody's got the, the virus and it's messed stuff up. I can't be getting caught up in all that. You know, I've got to keep away from it. Um, so, you know, it's, it, for me, it wouldn't be a wise choice. You've got to travel to America fair enough. You travel to America for three weeks, you get yourself sorted. But I don't want to get in caught in quarantine or be, you know, caught up somewhere. Uh, that's that's the way it is. Fair enough. Uh, let me quickly end the uh, interview asking you about two potential bizarre fights. Hmm. I don't know uh, what your take on this is. I'll find out in a second. Let's start with Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Logan Paul. Well, look at look at Mayweather against the the weight over and fought. Uh, Chinese guy, didn't he? Oh, in an Japan, Japan. In Japan, an, an yeah. exhibition guy, yeah. and, and give it the kid, didn't he? Like, you know, like, proper did him in. But, 
Yeah, I mean, you know what? I I saw the Logan. I don't know if you were there. You were there, weren't you? Yeah, I like. Yeah, the Logan Paul fight against KSI. I don't care what anybody says. That was a good fight. It was a good fight. The I, I've seen professional fighters, you know, who, uh, who've had three or four fights between who were supposed to be prospects, not fight as good as that. They give everything. He had, had thrills, spills, and drama, and I was entertained. Uh, Logan Paul's a big kid, but me with a smart, and he can fight, and he can move, and. You know, it's it'd be interesting, and if it creates if it creates interest, you know, me with us, is he still a professional boxer? Is it an exhibition? This what is it? What kind of fight is it? It'd probably be an exhibition. I'm surprised you're not kind of slating it a lot because 99 percent of boxing fans. Yeah, maybe they are, but, but where where is Mayweather? You know, what was the last fight Mayweather had? Uh, I think that Japanese fight and then but, the previous you know, one, McGregor. Saying, but, but the, yeah, McGregor. So let's but the, let, take McGregor out of the equation. Berto, Andre Berto. Right, Berto. How many years ago? Four years ago. Three. 2015 16. so let's say that was his last proper professional fight yeah let's say mcgregor was just a you know what it were the japanese so really he's gone into that moved into that way now so why are we talking about boxing because he's, he's all the exhibition stuff and it's fantasy matchups it's not really they're not in the same division they're not even the same weight are they no nah. right so it's not a boxing match then is it because boxing matches unless they're both over the heavyweight division you know how can you have two different weight classes fighting each other so for me He's, he's, he's gone out of the boxing, the realm of boxing, and it's, it's whatever it is, it's an exhibition, it's, what, it's a money-making thing, I don't know. But if he wants to do that, you know, he's not defending his world titles, he's not boxing at his, his weight, it's just a, a match-up, innit? So we can't, really, we can't really talk as boxing fans or, or being in the boxing business to talk about that because it's not really a fight, is it? It's, it's a money-making exercise. So if, he, if he's going to draw the crowds in, it's going to entertain people, yeah, it's not for the boxing, for, for, you know, fraternity, is it? It's for, like, maybe the YouTubers or whatever yeah. it is, I don't know. But if that's what's going to make him money, and it's, it's entertainment, but it's not boxing, is it? I mean, I'm not, I won't be viewing it as a boxing match. It's just entertainment. Same question about uh, Manny Pacquiao and Conor McGregor. More of a proper fight. You know, Manny Pacquiao's 40-odd. Um, McGregor's ran about that thing. If they get in the same weight and they both get licensed and it's made a fight, then why not? He's box, he's box, he's box Mayweather. Uh, Is it harmful for the sport? Same thing again. You know, for me, Manny Pacquiao and Mayweather have now moved out of that area where they were seen as the, the top two fighters. You know, they're, they're past an age. They're in the forties now. And there's other fighters coming through. They're not dominating the division. Or they're not like fighting guys in the in the division. They're picking fights. So it, I don't think it's damaging the sport. It might be damaging their, um, you know, their how people perceive their careers went. Mm. Um, yeah, a bit like Roy Jones mm. carrying on doing what he's doing. It's such a fantastic career. The legacy, should I say? They might be ruining the legacy of having these fights, as far as boxing fans are concerned. But I don't think it's damaging the sport of boxing because. Me, I wouldn't view it as boxing. It's something else. It's like exhibition stuff. It's not, you know, McGregor's not in that division. He's not a boxer, is he? He's, he's a crossover fight. Mm. So it'd be different, you know, if McGregor was a boxer and, you know, he had a boxing career and he wasn't very good. Maybe be different. But he's not. He's come from the UFC. It's crossover, isn't it? So it, for me, it's just moved out of the realms of boxing. So I don't really view it. You know what I mean? Fans might say, oh, it's wrong, that. But realistically, Manny Pacquiao, when was the last, you know, competitive fight? Oh, did he box Thurman? He beat Thurman. Thurman, yeah. You know what I mean? Beat Thurman, which was good. So, I, I would give it more credibility than McGregor against Pac-Man because he did all right against Mayweather. And, you know, he's, he's been at the top of his sport in UFC. He can he can fight. So, he's got he's got more credibility than the likes of Logan Paul, hasn't he? So if I had to say, you know, yeah, I'd go for that one, Logan Paul and, and, and me was a different kettle of fish. Yeah, from a business perspective, it's a yeah. no-brainer for them. But as far as boxing is concerned, look, you know, boxing fans, they say, no, this is not right, that's not right. Well, let's just concentrate on who's doing it, the, the kids coming through now, the, you know, the Anthony Joshuas and Pavekin and Whites. We don't need to talk about that, do we? Let's talk about what boxing is. Why do we need to be concerned? They've moved out of that realm, I think. You know, May was moved out of that now. Like I said, last competitive fight, 2015. Well, that were it then. Everything else is exhibition stuff. Once you start beating Japanese kids up on with two bob, and what kind of thing, you've got out of the picture, aren't you? Mm -hmm. You're not being competitive in your division anymore. So, you know, he's done great. Uh, he's, he's, he's almost retired, isn't he? It's, yeah, just fun, it's just fun stuff. I see what you're saying uh, with that. You is he ever going to come back, Mayweather? Is he ever going to come back and challenge any active fighter? In, in the welterweight or, you know, he's going to do that. Well, if you're getting your, you, 
highest or second highest purse to box Logan Paul, yeah. why would you box an Errol Spence or a Crawford? But who would you like? Money? Who would you like? Yeah, exactly. Would you? He's never going to box Errol Spence. No. He's never going to box these young kids coming through, and, and rightly so. Why should he? Because he's he's, he's getting past that you know that age uh, where he should be taking chances against them type of kids. You know, in his day, in his thirties, he would he would he would beat the likes of Errol Spence and the, even probably the Charlos because he's, he look he's, he's beat Gal he beat he beat Canelo. You know, bigger guys outsmarted him, and you can do that in your thirties, but not when you're knocking on to forty. Your reflex, your timing, your ambition goes. So you can't, you know, you can't fault Mayweather. He's been a great champion, and he's been very clever what he's done. But now he's getting to the age where you can't get away with that. There's always going to be some young kid. An example: Hopkins against. Um, Oh, Smith Jr. Yeah. yeah, and look how Smith Jr.'s come on since then. Hmm. You know what I mean? He's, 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 you know, that's he was just a bit too far for for Hopkins. Uh, but he, he getting to the age of fifty and, and having the career that he did was fantastic. But then he got caught out, and that's what would happen with me. Whether some kid, some kid coming through would catch him out. So you know, he's just played it safe, isn't he? Hmm. All right, Don. Best of luck with uh, Liam and Willie tomorrow night. I'm sure we'll catch a word after their fights. All right? Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt.